Hi, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining our webinar today. My name is Sean Malloy. I am the AWS Alliance Lead here at DataArt. Today, we'll be discussing how DataArt, in partnership with AWS, enables clients to overcome challenges and accelerate their database migrations to AWS. Our speakers today are Leslie Agino. He's our partner, uh, a partner database leader at AWS, as well as Alexei Gorbanov and Oleg Komisarov, who are database migration leaders here at DataArt. Uh, before I hand it over to our esteemed speakers, uh, I'd like to just remind you all to ask questions. Um, don't be shy. Uh, please do that in the comments section on the right side of your screen in that pane, um, and we will do our best to answer as many questions as possible during the dedicated Q&A at the tail end of this program. Um, if we can't get to them all, we'll, uh, we'll follow up offline. Uh, so with that, just wanted to say uh, welcome again. Thanks. We, uh, we appreciate your attendance, and uh, let's get this started. Over to you, Leslie. Thank you, Sean. So next slide, please, um, Ms. Cecilia. Anastasia, move to the next slide, please. So before I start, right, I would like to take a minute to find out from the audience how many of you are currently running databases on AWS today. You can just respond by putting plus one on the comment, and if you can specify the database engine you're running today, that will be great. No, previous slide, please. Thank you. So at AWS, our vision is to help you manage your data no matter where it lives. We understand that you live in a world where <coughs> You have a combination of data on-premise, some in one or more clouds, some in third party, and all of this data needs to be cataloged and governed, breaking down historic silos. Our goal is to meet you where you are and help you realize your target state. It doesn't matter whether you're running applications which are monolith, client server, three-tier or microservices, we can help and we have partners like Data Art that can help you move fast. It doesn't matter whether your goal is to replace an aging server, deprecate a data center, or to build an application of 100 million plus users simultaneously. At AWS, we have the approaches for you. And with partners like Data Art, we can work together to help you get to where you want to go. Our competitors are going to tell you that they have the technology to solve your data challenges. But at AWS, our strategy is to provide you the right tool for the right job via our relational and non-relational databases. And this breadth of databases has resonated with our customers that we've seen that the top 1,000 customers are using 10 or more of our data and analytics services at AWS. Now, working with customers across different industries of various sizes, what we've discovered is that they all have three core elements of their end-to-end -end data strategy. And what's data strategy? A modern data strategy starts with migrating to the cloud, moving towards infrastructure that enables you to achieve the scale you need at the right cost while reducing operational burden. And the three core elements that the leaders of our customers across all verticals, especially the very large industry customers, is one, they always start with a comprehensive set of services. When they're thinking about what can we do with our data, how can we innovate with our data, the first is having the right foundation. And that foundation has to do with a comprehensive set of services which can meet their needs now and their future needs. So that as your business scales, you don't have to re-architect your environment just because your business is scaling. If you're thinking about building a new product, you can quickly build that product without worrying about the risk and the complexities of all of that. So that's the first phase, the comprehensive set of services. And most of those foundations are built on top of our AWS purpose build databases, which I'll be talking about later. And then the second core element of their end-to-end -end data strategy is to have a solution that can integrate 
all the data services so you can access your data from wherever you are. And our solutions give you the ability to get that integration on the foundation which you've built with a comprehensive set of services. And now, once these customers have built the right foundation with our services, um, enabled the right integrations, that what they need next is to have the right governance in place that would enable the team to quickly drive value from their data. Because at the end of the day, every company wants to drive value from the data. And that's where we have the right governance that brings in the democratization of the data. So the core elements of an end-to-end -end data strategy that we're saying is leveraging the right purpose-built databases to have the right foundation, which is scalable, reliable, high resiliency, better performance or faster response, and then the right integration and building the governance on top. And our top customers across the biggest industries in the world are achieving that business value today on AWS. Next slide, please. I would like to highlight that Gartner recently recognized AWS as a leader in their, data, uh, in their database um, magic quadrant in 2022. And this time, we were rated, we were ranked highest in execution and folders in vision. And this report is for the top 20 customers for data and analytics. And AWS was ranked for the eighth time as a leader. Next slide, please. Now, how do you build a modern data strategy? You have to start by looking at your existing um, infrastructure, checking all these legacy systems, and then retiring all this technical debt by moving to databases that will help you scale with your business, that will help you reimagine the customer experience, and that will help you get the performance that your reports will be able to run in real time and deliver value for your stakeholders. And at AWS, we have a breadth of databases. So it doesn't matter what kind of databases you're, you're running, there's no database which is too big or too complex for AWS. We have from relational databases, which fall under our RDS databases, and within RDS, we have Amazon Aurora, which, is, which gives you one third the cost of commercial databases like Oracle and SQL Server at the same performance, and even more performance, because we've seen customers running Aurora and getting greater performance. And then, one of the values of Aurora is that Aurora enables you to have the serverless option. With the serverless option, you have the ability to get capacity on demand. So you don't need to worry about capacity planning. You don't need to worry about failures for high availability because with a single click, you can get high availability. With a single click, you can go global. So if you have customers in Indonesia, you have customers in Africa, with just a single click, Aurora enables you to achieve that. And then in addition to the relational databases, we have our NoSQL databases which we call purpose-built databases. We actually built the very first purpose-built database, which is DynamoDB, and we moved Amazon.com from Oracle to, demand, to DynamoDB. So just imagine if we could run a big, giant retail like Amazon.com on, Dynamo, on DynamoDB, then there's no complex workload that we cannot run on AWS. So for our NoSQL databases, we have DynamoDB, we have Elastic Cache that can help you get better performance. We have Neptune, that helps you for managing relationships. If you have um, data that has to do with relationships, you want to correlate the relationships to track like fraud or to track customer experience, to track recommendations, to be able to personalize the experience for your customers. Our Amazon Neptune can do that. And if you're thinking about blockchain, we have our QLDB. And if you have time series data that you want to integrate with your IoT, we have our time stream. Next slide, please. Now, as customers, move to the cloud, what they normally did traditionally was they retire the technical debt by lifting and shifting. But as you lift and shift your databases to EC2 on AWS, you realize that you start seeing a reduction in cost and an increase in innovation. From here, as you move to manage databases like the Amazon RDS services that I mentioned earlier, you, you, further, real, you further realize that the cost continues to reduce and your velocity to innovate continues to accelerate. Now, every business wants to innovate so they can compete with their peer groups, they can have competitive advantage. And moving to manage database frees you of all the differentiated heavy lifting tasks, which Oleg is gonna go deep into that later on and helps you to drive innovation. And as customers 
continue to move from the managed to a purpose built databases, they see the greatest savings, especially around velocity. So the velocity increases, they have the highest velocity when they're running on purpose built databases like Aurora and DynamoDB, and they're able to optimize costs to the fullest because at that point, they're able to leverage serverless offerings, which they don't have to worry about capacity. It scales on demand, and then they only pay for what they use for the time they're using it. And they're able to get very low latency, high throughput, greater durability of their data, and excellent scalability, and above better resiliency. Next slide. So, you're not alone thinking about migrating your database applications to AWS. We have over 800,000 databases that have been migrated. And these are databases that have been migrated through only one of our tools called DMS. This number does not include other database services, other tools that customers have used to migrate. And in addition to the 800,000 databases that have been migrated to AWS using AWS DMS, which is our database migration service that we'll dive deep into during this session today. We have customers across every segment. So if you look at the screen right, you might find customers in your industry there. This is just to let you know that you're not alone. We have, we have every use case, we have the right approaches for you. We have partners like Data Art that can support you. So if you're thinking about migrating and you're like, how do I go about it? How can I start the journey? I don't have the expertise. We can support you. We want to help you manage your data. We want to help you become data driven. We want to help you reimagine the customer experience for your customers. We want to help you run your reports faster. We want to help your application team to be able to have fast access to their database so they can increase their deployment frequency. And we've done that for customers across different segments. And you can just come to us and we're ready to help you. And we have data add to help build your strategy. Next slide, please. Not the previous one. So I just want to talk about some successes which our customers have seen moving their workloads to AWS. Australian Financial Group is one of them. They were spending over 80% of their budget on operational costs, and they migrated their Oracle Exadata to Amazon RDS for Oracle, and they were able to save 500,000 US dollars per year. This was a huge saving, which can be put in to help build new applications to innovate the business. Another use case is Kaplan. Kaplan was able to deprecate their data centers by moving to AWS. And then we see other customers like Cataway Pacific that were able to gain better performance as compared to running on-premise by moving the workloads to AWS. And lastly, we have customers that sometimes they are not ready to move so they want a two-step approach because they are not ready to let go of the licenses for the commercial database. These customers move to RDS and then later on, once they have built the capabilities and leverage partners like Data Ad to support them in building their strategy and planning the roadmap for migration, then at that time, they refactor the Oracle to be able to break free from the commercial database licenses, which are very expensive, which to be free from the frequent audits that helps pull money away from them, and then they're able to achieve full business value by leveraging our um, cloud native databases like RDS Postgres and Amazon Aurora. So these are just examples of how customers are winning on AWS. There are many more examples of customers that have optimized their costs. Data Ad has a lot of case studies that it can share with you, and on our AWS website, you find much more case studies there. Next slide, please. Now, we know you get the business value of optimizing your costs, the velocity to innovate, but how do you get there? So we have the tools to support you. We have our AWS DMS, which I just explained, over 800,000 databases have been migrated using AWS DMS. So there's no workload so complex or too big that DMS cannot help you. But DMS is just one of the tools. And if you're thinking of modernizing, refactoring to Aurora, breaking free from the licenses that Oracle and Microsoft SQL Server, we have SCT that can scan your code and give you recommendations and show you the level of effort which is required for you to move this workload from the current state to the future state on AWS. And partners like Data Ad can help you drive that value with less risk to your business and with faster time to value. In addition to that, 
We have programs like the DMA. DMA is a program which we have helped a lot of customers migrate and we're now willing to share the solutions, the lesson learned that we got from working with all these hundreds of customers, modernizing their Oracle and SQL and mainframe applications on AWS, on Amazon RDS, on um, Aurora and on DynamoDB. We, are, we, we have solutions that we can show you to help you plan on how to move. Thank you. I'm going to hand it over to Oleg, who's going to talk about data ad and how data ad can help you. Thank you, Leslie. So there are three uh, different migration paths or uh, migration approaches that bring different business values. First of them is lift and shift or rehosting is a migration approach for moving existing commercial databases like Oracle or Microsoft SQL Server to the cloud without major changes. So main business value here is infrastructure flexibility. The database remain self-managed and operated similarly to on-premises systems. Move to managed or re-platforming involves migrating databases to Amazon uh, relational database service. Key business value here is reduction of self-managed efforts, including backup recovery and patching. It also enables greater scalability to support the needs of growing applications and uh, businesses also can expect reduced licensing costs. Modernize or re-architecting entails moving away from commercial databases and shifting to AWS purpose-built managed databases that Leslie mentioned, such as Amazon Aurora, DynamoDB, or Redshift. Uh, this approach delivers superior technical scalability and flexibility, allowing business to focus on adding unique business values. Uh, modernizing also enables businesses to optimize cost further and leverage the extensive array of non-database services provided by AWS because these purpose-built databases are integrated with the rest of AWS services. It also frees available in-house resources that could be redirected from non-differentiated activities to innovation and implementation of business priorities. So as you can see, managed and self-managed databases provide different values. Let's understand details uh, better. Self-managed databases give you the complete control over the infrastructure from patching and maintenance to backup and recovery. You are responsible for the entire database um, stack management, including operating system, database software, and hardware. This requires, though, a significant expertise and resources, but it also, of course, allows you for greater customization and control. Fully managed databases, such as Amazon RDS, take on much of the responsibility for the database stack. AWS manages uh, infrastructure, operating system, database software, scaling, and you are managing the database and database configuration, uh, database data, right, and configuration. Managed databases reduce the amount of maintenance and administration, but still allow for some uh, flexibility and customization. And the third type, RDS Custom, is a fully managed database service, but you also can choose your own software on the top of it, or you can even bring your own license for specific database engines. So overall, self-managed databases provide the greatest level of control and customization, but also require most resources and uh, expertise to manage them. Fully managed databases provide a balance between convenience and control. And uh, RDS Custom uh, provide even greater level of control and customization while uh, still being 
uh, while still benefiting from infrastructure management by AWS. So AWS provide, provides various target database migration options. RDS is managed relational database service that supports MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle, and Microsoft engines. And Amazon Aurora is a managed database engine that was built by AWS for the cloud. And it is compatible with MySQL and PostgreSQL. So how it's different from RDS, Aurora performance, scalability, and availability exceeds traditional databases, that making it a popular choice for modern application. Aurora also provides automated failover capabilities, allowing for rapid failover in case of database outage, which is very important for enterprises. So after completion of dozens of migration pro uh, uh, pro projects uh, and RDS and Aurora implementations, AWS qualify data R to perform RDS service delivery engagements. So migrating databases can present a significant challenge for businesses, including the need for a time-consuming and manual discovery process, the complexity and potential for errors during the migration process, and the high cost of refactoring of legacy systems. Additionally, there is a high risk of not completing migrations on time and on budget, as well as creating more technical debt, unfortunately, during the migration process. Another significant challenge is a lack of internal expertise, which can impact effective analysis, planning, design, and all these have an impact on uh, identifying the correct migration path, um, manage database option, and target database engine. Uh, complete database migration solution combines several components. Automated migration tools and services, professional enablement, and acceleration programs. All of them are very important. Automated tools include data migration service fleet advisor and schema conversion tool. Uh, you will see a short demo of these tools later today. Alexi will conduct them. Professional migration always consists of three stages, assessment, mobilization, and migration. So experienced uh, migration engineers are trained to use migration best practices, guides, and out-of-the-box migration materials to enable careful analysis, planning, and execution so that business can reduce the risk of uh, complications that I mentioned on the previous slide and realize the business um, benefits of database migration. AWS developed migration acceleration programs, which is the third component that may, that may help you to receive funds and additional professional help to accelerate uh, your database migration. Uh, data art completing, completed dozens of migration projects and, as I mentioned, was qualified by AWS as uh, migration service competency partner. Our migration service of competency developed a specialized consultative database, mm, database migration assessment offering that covers assess and uh, mobilize stages of database migration journey and typically conducted in several weeks. It involves use of automated migration tools that I mentioned and accelerators, but we also tailor, it, tailor these tools and methodology to you know, your specific needs. Consultative assessment provides actionable deliverables such as recommendation reports, including uh, migration path, database engine, and type of managed database, migration roadmap, cost, and time estimates. So I mentioned MAP, migration acceleration programs by AWS that provide access to funds. Uh, qualified workloads, uh, 
are eligible for up to 25% uh, of saving large workloads. Smaller workloads could be qualified for up to 15% of savings and proof of concept projects could be qualified for full uh, refunding, for full funding. And um, as a qualified migration partner, data art can help to identify if you are if your migration meets qualification criteria, and we can help to apply and get approvals uh, of uh, MAP program and realize migration program benefits. So these migrations are also included, um, these recommendations are also included into our um, uh, consultative or offering assessment uh, uh, program. So if you are starting your database migration journey or executing migrations, or you need just consultation or additional professional help, please feel free to contact partnerships.aws at datar.com to inquiry consultative assessment. This is a quick and effective, efficient way to get on successful migration path. So, Thank you, and with that, I'm uh, handing over to Alexei, who will come to the demo. Thank you, Oleg. Hello, everyone. As Oleg mentioned, uh, automated tools are a part of the complete database migration solution. Today, I will demonstrate two database migration acceleration use cases. Oracle to Postgre RDS migration assessment with uh, AWS schema conversion tool and uh, SQL Server migration assessment with DMS Fleet Advisor. Oh, sorry. Uh, AWS schema conversion tool is a desktop application uh, which needs to be downloaded and installed locally. On assess stage, it automates following steps. Analysis of database conversion complexity, discovery of migration restrictions, analysis of license downgrades. It also automatically converts database schema from source to target, highlights migration issues, generates action items where automated conversion cannot be completed, and finally converts SQL script and even SQL code in application. The schema conversion tool supports assessment for more than two dozen uh, database engines, uh, data warehouses, and ETL tools, including all popular commercial databases. Let me switch uh, to application console to continue the, this demo. Um, we will focus today on migration assessment report. Uh, which plays a crucial role in the database migration process. To generate assessment report, I connected to Oracle instance, which I'm planning to migrate, and have chosen the specific, I'm sorry, uh, the specific schema, um, what I want to assess. Uh, now I'm ready to create the report. Let me open pre-generated report to save some time for us. The assessment helps us to understand complexity of the migration and provides us with analysis of migration to all possible target database engines. Specifically, in our case, you can see um, <clears throat> you can see uh, several different target engines we can use for our migration with different level of migration complexity. The migration complexity can be described by percentage uh, of storage object, uh, code object, and uh, conversion action, which can be applied or executed with a minimal or complex manual intervention. The executive summary uh, can help us to choose preferred uh, migration target. We can see similar level of complexity for Amazon RDS for Postgres uh, SQL and uh, Amazon Aurora Postgres compatible platform. Uh, in our case, I would prefer to use Amazon Aurora Postgres uh, SQL 
for our migration. And potential driver uh, for this decision could be uh, the unique features uh, of Aurora, Amazon Aurora, like global database and serverless option. Scrolling down, we can find target specific report, uh, uh, which is available for all, uh, each uh, individual target engine identified during our assessment. This part provides uh, color-coded histograms to describe itemized migration efforts for specific engine target. The colors reflect complexity of the migration. On my next step, I'm going to choose target platform and connect to my uh, to my instance. Uh, to proceed with uh, schema conversion. Usually it takes just a moment. Yeah. After connection is established, we can switch to assessment. We can switch to assessment report view to access uh, the target specific report. On the action item tabs, uh, tab, you can find all actions required to complete migration, including description of the issue, recommended actions, uh, a current statistic, and even documentation reference when it's uh, available. On the main view, we can proceed with schema conversion. Usually schema conversion uh, takes a very short period of time, but for large database, it could take hours. All objects required any manual intervention are marked with exclamation mark in small red circle. Uh, you can open the object required the, our attention, uh, find highlighted code, uh, code which caused the issue, and even adjust, validate and adjust code generated for target platform. Finally, a converted schema can be saved as a SQL script or applied to a target instance. So as you can see, uh, AWS schema conversion tool is an effective way to convert your existing database schemas from one database engine to another. AWS SCT provides several powerful, powerful features to help streamline the database conversion process. So let me move on the second use case. Our second use case is SQL Server Migration Assessment with DMS Fleet Advisor. DMS Fleet Advisor is a tool for organizations running large fleets of databases who need to capture uh, the full picture of their database inventory in order to identify the databases to migrate and build a migration plan. Bulk discovery and recommendations are the key features of Fleet Advisor. Currently, Fleet Advisor supports Oracle, SQL Server, uh, MySQL, and PostgreSQL. Please note, uh, currently our recommendations can be built for homogeneous migrations only. For database fleet discovery, DMS data collector agent must be installed and configured in local data center. It collects data and securely uploads it to AWS S3 bucket. The agent collects server metadata, database capacity, and optionally resource utilization metrics. DMS used that information to analyze databases schemas and build migration recommendations. Only database metadata is transferred. The data itself is never accessed by data collector. Let's take a look at the database inventory built by DMS. In my example, uh, three databases were discovered 
uh, during assessment. The inventory can be used uh, for migration planning by looking at factors such as support type, complexity of the migration, similarity of schemas, and on schema level, we can find informa information about uh, object number of object, uh, object size, and uh, line counts. The inventory can be exported to CSV file for further processing. And finally, let's take a look uh, at the recommendations. To generate recommendation, I must click generate recommendation button. Apologize, sometimes interface. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry for that. Um, uh, here I can select one or more databases from inventory list. Uh, <clears throat> select availability type, target and target instance uh, sizing strategy and click generate button. Let me open the report I already generated to see the value which this report provides to us. Uh, as you can see, this report specifically uh, provides the only target option, which is RDS for SQL Server. We can find more options for engines which have alternative implementation in AWS, like uh, PostgreSQL and MySQL. Both can be implemented, uh, implemented as RDS or Aurora. Uh, the Target recommendation report contains important in information about uh, target instance size, type and size, information about storage, license model, and cost estimate. From here, you can play this AWS calculator and change the recommended configuration to see how projected costs are changing. The discovery and assessment can be conducted for hundreds of servers automatically, and DMS Fleet Advisor builds migration recommendation, uh, including instance type and size, and provides cost estimate. The recommendation feature is brand new and generally available as of March of 2023. Thank you. Sean, the floor is yours. Thanks, Lexi. Yeah, so now we've come to the portion uh, for Q&A. Let me just uh, gather some of these questions. Um, I would say uh, if you do have questions, you it's not too late, so do enter those into uh, into LinkedIn uh, as, as comments, and we'll try to get to those uh, in turn. Um, so <clears throat> first one that I see here is, uh, can you provide a real-life example of a migration assessment that you've done with uh, the schema conversion tool, I guess the SCT. Um, who wants to take that one? Yeah, let me let me take this question. Um, right, one of the recent case studies that we have where we used a schema conversion tool uh, is a large uh, European, one of the largest European uh, stock exchanges and tool helped us to streamline migration of uh, the same case that Alexi presented. It was Oracle Aurora to or Oracle on-prem to Aurora Postgres migration. Uh, so we performed uh, analysis uh, using a schema conversion tool. Original Oracle database had uh, more than 400 tables, uh, several dozens uh, of stored procedures, and uh, SCT did what it's supposed to do. It helped us to automatically convert uh, more than 85% of all database objects to uh, Aurora Postgres. And in my estimate, it saved us about maybe two, three months uh, on, on analysis and uh, target uh, schema uh, recommendation recommendations. Uh, 
And uh, as always, right, since uh, all that conversion or most of the conversion was performed automatically, migration team focused mostly on uh, database refactoring and taking care of issues uh, highlighted by a SCT tool and improvement target uh, database key one uh, structure. So as of today, client is running migrated database in the cloud um, and enjoying all these benefits of Aurora uh, that we uh, mentioned in the presentation, better disaster recovery uh, cross uh, regional uh, data replication. So far, we, you know, everything was very stable. We did not have any production issues related to databases, migrated database. Great. Thanks, uh, Oleg. That's good to hear. Um, maybe a follow on to that. It looks like, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, yeah, Alexi had shown some of the AWS tools for migration, so the SCT and the Fleet Advisor. Um, but does uh, does Data Art offer any proprietary tools to supplement those? Uh, yeah, we use uh, proprietary tools specifically for popular databases assessments. Uh, Microsoft SQL, Oracle SQL. These uh, tools are not an official service pack by AWS. Uh, these tools help to perform even deeper analysis uh, of, of databases and uh, useful for experts, uh, right? Um, and, and also consider that uh, what we are offering um, in this webinar is um, assessment package, right? But after assessment, someone, data art or company organization have to execute this migration project and a kind of tail of this assessment includes setting up all the migration environment uh, that uh, also uh, has to be reliable, scalable, uh, right? Uh, and usually it takes time uh, to configure um, uh, database, DMS migration services or other approaches. So another tool set that we have uh, developed is a set of uh, CDK, Cloud Development Toolkit uh, scripts and, and modules that help to automate um, infrastructure provisioning for migration and migration monitoring. So this is another the kind of proprietary accelerator that we offer and use. Perfect. Let me see what's next. Um, someone has a question here. Um, I would like to move to managed, but also to perform some code improvements and re-architecture. Um, how would this impact that the uh, assessment stage? Uh, right. So. Uh, assessment stage would include in this case, uh, based on your uh, business goals and objectives, specific recommendations. So, uh, for example, in 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 case that that I in use for for the case study that I mentioned earlier, with uh, migration assessment recommendation was to uh, move data and uh, enable real-time replication data from uh, legacy to new database, and then continue with refactoring in the cloud, gradually uh, um, uh, redesign schemas and organize cloud-based uh, data transformations to, to the new schema. So that was one of the approaches. Database was huge, that's why I am mentioning it depends on, 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 on business case. Database was huge and it's just practically impossible to uh, do a big bank migration plus perform schema transformation in, in one shot. It would be too much instability for, for the enterprise and potential issues, right? But if your workload is smaller, right, uh, then potentially migration itself will include conversion. And in this case, even schema conversion tool will be able to help to transform data to, to the new schema. 
So uh, basically, these recommendations about your suggested migration path, how you perform architecture, other part of the assessment phase, and uh, in the project plan. Uh, I think Oleg was breaking up a little bit on my side. Is everybody okay? Stream okay? Okay. So maybe just move on to one question that just actually came in. Um, maybe they could give an opportunity for Alexi to chime in um, if uh, Oleg's having some issues. Um, the question is: We currently have old legacy an old legacy application. Our goal is to modernize uh, this. What are some steps we can use to securely migrate our data? Uh, we currently use MySQL databases. Anybody want to take that? Um, I can take it. Uh, uh, one, the most popular uh, tool uh, to data migration in AWS is AWS DMS, Data Migration Service. So you can easily uh, migrate data uh, from one uh, source to another. Uh, specifically here, you can uh, use homogeneous data migration and migrate your MySQL database to uh, RDS, uh, MySQL RDS. Um, you can also use uh, as a target uh, Aurora a MySQL compatible platform uh, for data migration. Great, um, thank you for that, Alexei. Uh, maybe staying with you, <clears throat> um, sorry, staying with you, um, this might be a provocative question, but uh, can you talk more about migration tool set limitations? I'm not sure what, what they mean by that, but uh, if you could can maybe try your best to answer that. Uh, I can start. Uh, obviously, uh, migration tools, all migration tools uh, have uh, some limitation uh, for heterogeneous uh, database migrations. Uh, because of nature, uh, different nature of uh, data platform, we want to migrate uh, one data uh, engine to another. Uh, but besides that, uh, that tools provide huge, uh, huge improvement uh, in terms of uh, how much time you need to, uh, pro uh, to complete assessment uh, of your migration and uh, help you to migrate a large amount of data from uh, on-prem to cloud, uh, like da database uh, migration service, for example. So yeah, uh, from my perspective, uh, the biggest uh, concern can be a different homogeneous, uh, I'm sorry, a heterogeneous uh, database migration, but even in this case, uh, cloud uh, uh, tools like uh, schema conversion tool provide you uh, this prescriptive guidance uh, what exactly you need to uh, do to in order to complete your uh, migration. Got it. Yeah, also some yeah, of uh, migrations. Uh, oh, please continue, Leslie. <laughs> yeah, and I just wanted to add that, as I explained, right, over 800,000 databases have migrated to AWS. And there are no, there's no workload or database which is so big or complex for AWS. Now, I think talking about limitations, we need to understand what the use case is because we've been able to migrate the biggest customers across every vertical. Now, all we need to do is to assess your workload and we'll have the right approach for you. So if you have a, if you have a scenario which you think there's gonna be some kind of limitation, reach out to us, reach out to the data ad team and we'll work with you to build a roadmap and show you how you can unblock those challenges and achieve your value by migrating to AWS. Um, Oleg. Yeah, thank you. And uh, some, sometimes there are really challenging cases. Uh, for example, when clients would want to move off, uh, let's say Microsoft SQL, and they don't want that. So they want to move off Microsoft SQL, but they have a large uh, estate of uh, applications that already integrated with uh, this database. And potentially there is a huge, uh, uh, there, there is a large volume of uh, refactoring and migration to new engine uh, like uh, Postgres, right? So in, in this case, again, uh, maybe, so my migration recommendation would, can, will, would include uh, considering um, 
a new offering by AWS, Babelfish, that basic, basically can uh, run Postgres database, uh, uh, retaining all your uh, Microsoft Transact uh, SQL uh, statements and, and convert seamlessly on the go. So th th that's why uh, for many of uh, limitations or challenging cases, there could be an answer that probably not even the part of the migration process itself, but uh, a te technology answer. Got it. Thanks, Oleg. Uh, do we have time maybe for, for one more? And I apologize, Leslie, maybe you did such a good job with your slides that no one uh, had any questions for you, but uh, thanks again. Um, maybe one more. So um, uh, I, I would like to move to managed, but also perform some code improvements. How does this impact the, the assessment stage? Did we do that one yet? Yeah, we just answered it, yeah. Oh, okay, that was, that was the last one then, I think. Um, all right, uh, so I guess we are at time. Uh, thanks everybody for coming, especially thanks to our partners at AWS. Thank you, Leslie, for your active collaboration on this. Um, covered a lot of ground here in about 45 minutes, um, so I'm sure some of you may have some remaining questions. So if you would like to reach out, um, spend some time with our experts here, um, we're happy to uh, to schedule a call or, or even you know a, a workshop, so please reach out to us. Um, I think we had an ending slide. Um, you can you can uh, reach us at partnership.aws at dataart.com. Uh, so once again, thanks a lot, and uh, have a great rest of your day.